Hey everyone, it's Connor here, and welcome back to part two of this very interesting case. So in this little plastic tube here, we have the sample that I harvested from the patient's ear on the previous video. And um, that sample contained, well basically it was just kind of a slimy mess of, of, of mycelium and wax and dead skin. And what's happened here is that I've left it in the tube for about a week. And it's transformed into th this sample which has lots of ha little hairs growing out of it with black dots on the end. And I'll explain what those are during the video. But uh, originally when I collected it from the patient's ear, it just, you know, again, it was a slimy mess with a few black dots kind of embedded in it. And it's developed into what is essentially, it looks like a sort of a little world under the compound microscope, which is what we see here. So it's all silhouetted at the moment, but I will shine some light on it when we go into dark field microscopy. But uh, just here, I wanted to show you initially the, this, this kind of hairy part down the bottom here. This is the mycelium. This is very clearly showing the mycelium of the fungus. So, it, you know, if the fungus is going to grow on something, what will happen is that a mycelium will develop. And that is the bed of root, sort of bed rooting part of the fungus upon which spores will grow out of. So, and uh, I've described it before as kind of a very fine weave or mesh or quilt of these very fine white fibers. And that's what we're seeing here. And, uh, you know, the individual strands, we call that hyphae, you know, the hyphae of the fungus. And those little kind of speckly bits there, that's, you know, those are spores, what we call the conidia. And uh, you can see some of this, uh, some of these hyphae will develop a little head. And that's what we see further up here. And then we call it a conidiophore. Okay, some people will call it a sporangium, but basically a conidiophore is the kind of sprouting part of the fungus. So it's these little filaments with the ball on the end. And that ball, there we go, that ball will contain lots and lots and lots of spores. Okay, so that's obviously how the fungus spreads and proliferates and, and so on. So uh, the, what you have to imagine is that we're seeing, I've not taken this out of the tube, so what you're seeing is the sample kind of smushed up against the side of the tube, and that's why it kind of looks a bit like the underside of a slug. So that's why certain parts are kind of splodged up towards the screen. But you can very clearly see, um, you know, the spores growing out of this dead skin wax sample. And um, that's a, basically the color of the spores is how you identify the fungus. So in this case, I mean, I'm pretty much 99% sure that this fungus is Aspergillus niger, niger being Latin for black. And uh, the word Aspergillus actually isn't Latin or Greek, which is unusual. Um, it's actually derived from an Italian word called Aspergillum. And though, if, you, if there are any Catholics out there, or if you've been to a Catholic mass, you'll, you'll probably have seen one. An Aspergillum is like a, a stick with a hollow ball on the end and the priest will dip it in holy water and sprinkle the holy water over things and, and the congregation. And the reason it has that name is because the person who first discovered this and described it, which I think his name was Antonio Michelli, um, he was a priest and a biologist in the 1700s. So he thought it looked like an aspergillum, so he described it as aspergillus. So, um, that's that. So, but the, the latter part of the word Niger is always Latin. And depending on what strain you get, um, the, the spores, the conidia, which you can see very clearly here in a spherical configuration up, 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 uh, upon the filament, the hyphae, um, those spores will be different. So, for example, in um, Aspergillus flavus, flavus is Latin for yellow. And that colony, if you were to, to grow it, well, it, it might have a yellow tinge, although often it looks green, actually. Um, and if you think about Aspergillus fumigatus, um, it, that, that has a kind of smoky blue appearance in a Petri dish. And that word fumigatus is derived from the Latin fumigar or fumigare, which is for smoke. So it, it looks a bit like the kind of tinge, um, like if you look at cigarette smoke in a light, it kind of has that bluish tinge to it. That's, that's what it's referring to. So you can see here some immature conidia fours there. And uh, you're probably thinking at this point, well, you know, the, some of these um, conidia fours, they have a kind of brown appearance to them. Um, the mature ones definitely look dark and black, but um, some of them look brown. And what you have to remember is that we're shining a very powerful light 
on this sample. So when you get to these kind of high levels of magnification, the more light you need, and that obviously distorts the image a little bit. Um, and obviously the higher the magnification, the more... It looks okay here, but if we were to go any higher, the more garbagey the image looks. Um, so, and here you can see that the bit that's splodged up against the tube, there's actually spores inside of that. Um, but that's just because upon taking the sample, I probably kind of folded it and just kind of messed it up and, and splodged it a little bit. So that's probably why the spores are kind of embedded within the, the, the sample. But we'll just get a close-up of that. Um, a, a lot of people have been asking, how has this happened? Uh, how has this formed, this black mould inside the patient's ear? And uh, I've explained it before briefly, um, but I mean, basically this fungus is, you know, is very natural in the world. It's in the soil, it's on surfaces, it's on your body probably. And um, usually it's fine. And there's a very fine balance, you know, of the flora of bacteria and microorganisms on your skin. And if one is knocked out of kilter, then the other one will take over. So um, I'm not exactly sure what happened to this patient. I mean, it's quite possible that he overused um, antibiotic eardrops. And antibiotic eardrops will, will kill bacteria, obviously, but will not harm fungus that much. And uh, if there's no bacteria around, then the fungus will take over. And it, it's, an, it's, you know, it's an opportunistic microorganism, right? Um, this patient happens to be immunocompromised due to several medicines that they're taking. So, you know, that, that makes things a little bit complicated because then the immune system can't, you know, launch a formidable response to this fungal infection. So it's just a close-up here of the, the mycelium, again, the, the rooting part of the fungus. I think that looks quite nice. So, again, a very, very interesting look. And again, this is sort of how you would ID uh, a fungus. And you're, usually you, you take a sample and then you spread it on like a, an agar plate, which is like a plastic dish, basically, like a petri dish with some growth medium on it, like potato dextrose, right? And that gives the, the fungus kind of food and moisture to grow. But in this case, we didn't need that. We had earwax as the medium. So there we go. Uh, I hope you found this video interesting. I thought it was, uh, it was a very cool microscope video to share with you guys. Um, I've not taken it, I've not thrown it away yet. It's still there in the container. So I don't know, if it looks interesting, then I'll, I'll film an update. But, um, and if I see this patient again, um, I, I will also give an update. Um, hopefully the antifungal drops have worked and he's happy. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I'll try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.